Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today I'm going to be reacting to Lin Thammy History of Japan. Uh, today's episode is called How the Fujiwara Rose to Power. Okay, let's start. Oh yeah, and remember if you want to check out my previous reactions, I'll put the card at the top. Just click on it and you'll be able to access them. Alright, 3, 2, 1, go. The Fujiwara clan dominated the Japanese court in the Nara and Heian periods. They started their power grab immediately out of the womb. Nakatomi no Kabatari was the founding father. He helped Emperor Tenji gain power through a coup, and so before Kamatari died, Emperor Tenji granted his coup buddy the surname of Fujiwara to honor him, thus starting the Fujiwara clan. The Nara period saw a constant battle for the throne between the Fujiwara and the imperial princes. Kamatari's son was Fujiwara no Fuito, and dude was a cunning and ambitious fox. Fuito found an ally in Empress Jito, who quickly lifted him up through the ranks. He was actually instrumental in drafting her reforms to strengthen the state. Fuito's game plan was, like many others, to marry his daughters into the imperial family. He married two daughters to a previous emperor, and when Emperor Monmu took office, took throne, he worked with Jito to organize the marriage between his daughter Miyako and Emperor Monmu. Miyako bore Monmu a son, Prince Obito. Under the tradition of double royalty, their son could not become Monmu's heir because Miyako did not have royal blood. She couldn't become Monmu's main consort. Monmu's heir had to come from one of his other consorts. Fuito wasn't okay with this tradition. One thing you gotta know about the Fujiwara is that they cared as much about tradition as your mom cares about not embarrassing you. Through scheming, he stripped Monmu's other two consorts of their consort's status, leaving the emperor with only Miyako. She became Monmu's de facto main consort, despite not having the title of main consort, which meant her son became the crown prince, the heir to the throne. The others in court were pissed at this power play particularly one of the Fujiwara's main rivals at the time, Prince Nagaya. Nagaya held one of the highest positions in court. He was the Sadaijin, the minister of the left. He was not a good enemy to have. Nagaya wanted to protect the imperial family, his family, from the Fujiwara invasion. Fuito had four sons, who eventually went on to found the four houses of the Fujiwara clan. Fuito thought, well, I've done a lot for my family, then died. While Fuito had influence in court, there were two female rulers. When Emperor Monmu died, his son Obito was only six, too young to be emperor. There was also still much opposition to Obito from the non-Fujiwara factions in court. And so Monmu's mother ascended the throne and became Empress Genmei to hold on to power until Prince Obito came of age. At least that was the official reason. Genmei was the one who moved the capital from Fujiwara Kyo to Nara, by the way. When Obito came of age, Genmei did abdicate the throne in favor of her daughter, who became Empress Gensho. So Obito the Disappointed had to wait again. It's not really clear why Genmei did this. Maybe she thought that there was still strong opposition to Obito, that it would cause trouble for his reign. Or maybe she thought her competent daughter was a better ruler. It really did seem like Genmei and Gensho weren't too fond of the Fujiwara. They kept appointing imperial princes to high court's positions instead of Fujiwara men. Gensho ruled for about nine years before finally abdicating in favor of Prince Obito, who became Emperor Shoumu. Now, after the death of Fujiwara no Fuito, Prince Nagaya became the most influential person in court, but not for long. Nagaya and his allies could not push back against the Fujiwara. That was clear when they could not stop Shoumu from becoming emperor. The four Fujiwara brothers had enough of Prince Nagaya's complaints and accused him of planning a rebellion. Guards surrounded his residence and he was forced to commit suicide along with his wife and children. They also exiled a number of his supporters. And with that bit of business done, the Fujiwara four took control. They dominated the top tier of government. Although they were ruthless politically, they passed laws that benefited the common people. They got rid of military conscription, reduced taxes by half, created hospitals and charitable organizations, and placed troops in outlying regions to keep the peace. Not bad. Then, in court, the Fujiwara scored a big political win. Their sister, Komio, was consort to Emperor Shomu, but Shomu had other consorts, and the Fujiwara brothers couldn't let a son of another consort become heir. 
and so they promoted Komio to the rank of Kogo, or Empress Consort. It meant she was an empress, just not currently ruling. At the time, this meant one of her children would become the heir, regardless of how many children Shomu's other consorts had. This again enraged the others in courts, because the title of Empress Consort was traditionally granted only to royal women, not someone from an outsider clan. The courts grumbled. The Fujiwara asked if there was a problem, and the court said no. And then, when the Fujiwara Four were at the height of their power, something unexpected happened. It shows you how trivial the concerns of humans are in the face of Mother Nature. Years of careful planning and scheming can evaporate in a moment. In 735, a smallpox epidemic began raging across Japan, creeping towards the capital. Emperor Shomu, a devout Buddhist, had priests at all the shrines and temples pray for it to stop. Surprisingly, it didn't stop. We don't often talk about diseases, but they were a huge part of Japan's history, especially smallpox. Smallpox outbreaks ravaged Japan time after time. This particular outbreak was the first ever recorded in Japan. It lasted two years, two devastating years. It was a national emergency. Up to a third of the population perished. The amount of deaths caused all kinds of damage, including to the economy like we mentioned before. Emperor Shomu focused even more on helpful things like building Buddhist temples and encouraging Buddhist worship to protect the people. In the end, all four Fujiwara brothers succumbed to the disease, and the balance of power in court shifted away from the Fujiwara house and towards the imperial allies. However, the four Fujiwara houses continued on. Fujiwara power had already seeped through the foundations of the court. This young and ambitious clan was not going anywhere. Yo, leave a like and comment if you know what's good for you. Nah. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're not a patron yet, please check out the Patreon link below. I hope you'll consider joining. We have a Discord channel. I just want to take a moment to thank our three new patrons this week. Mix Smith, who seems like he mixes drinks and so must be a bartender. Vietnamese style. Heyo, we've talked in Discord before. I had a lot of fun listening to old anime and Chinese tunes. And thirdly, oh la lan. I think that's how I'm supposed to say it. And oh my god, we just got someone who has been a patron for a long time, but recently increased his pledge to become an emperor patron. Thank you so much, Meshua. I really appreciate it. Not really, you and all the other patrons are just too generous. Alright guys, much love and spread the knowledge. One moment you can bask in the sunlight, be as powerful as the gods themselves, and then the sun sets and your empire comes to ruin. What comes next is very important. Does it survive into a brand new age or does it die and you know be written in history books? And that's exactly what happened with the Fujiwara clan. Uh, the smallpox outbreak really decimated Japan and decimated the Fujiwara clan but they did not go quietly into the night they are still there um, their people their institutions their members of the royal family you know they're hooked into the imperial japanese royal family that it's going to be very hard to dislodge them from that position so yeah all the way from um what's her name empress genme why, why do why do the royal family members change their names once they become emperors? Uh, first she was Miyaka and now she changed her name to Empress uh, Genmei. And Obito was Prince Obito and then when he became Emperor, he became Emperor Shonu. And also his sister uh, was Gensho. I don't know what her name was before she became the Empress. But I find that quite interesting that they changed their names once they become uh, head of state um, yeah that, that was quite interesting and yeah the Fujiwara clan really um, built an, their enclave and their control within the royal family making sure that other consorts don't have any political power no matter if they even have the children of the emperor it doesn't matter uh, the consort empress on the side of the Fujiwara clan would always have a successor to the throne and all these other consorts children um, have no political power or any kind of 
um, chance of becoming uh, the emperor or empress of Japan. That was quite interesting. Um, and it started long before. It started in the time of Empress Jintu uh, and her um, alliance with the Fujiwara clan, which ultimately led to Emperor Mon, uh, Mon, Monmu, yeah, Monmu and uh, Empress uh, Genmei being together, having children. And then that same process happened again where they've dislodged themselves from the traditional uh, expectations where royal family members are only meant to be having a royal heir to the throne but now a person from a, um, a a clan can also produce an heir to the throne which I think is better <laughs> because you know marrying and having children with your second sister or second cousin just because they're royal family members and then you produce an heir, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm actually thankful that the Fujiwara clan insisted on making this, you know, in their political favor. I understand that, you know, it was their ambition, um, but the good side of it is that they're not really marrying uh, or having children with uh, their blood relatives, unlike the imperial royal family. Oof, that, 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 that's just something I cannot, I cannot handle. <laughs> I cannot handle that. Oh, that's crazy. But yeah, this was interesting. This was very interesting. Okay, guys, um, that's it for today. If you liked the video, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos. And I will see you next week, Tuesday. Okay? Bye-bye.